Now it's time to create some layers and add some content to our project. First of all, I want to create a new background layer, a solid layer. Let's make sure that our main composition is selected. Come in here and click into the timeline panel here. And then we go to layer and we can select new and then we can create a new solid. If your composition is not selected and you go to layer, you see that this is grayed out. So you cannot create a layer if no composition is selected. So again, let's select the composition and then come up here to layer, select new, and then we can create a new solid. Solids are more or less the standard layers in After Effects. I can also create a new solid by pressing Ctrl and Y. So let's test out this keyboard shortcut. Let's press Ctrl and Y. And then you see we get this solid settings dialog. First of all, we can specify a name here. So let's type in background. We can specify width and the height. I also have the option here to lock the aspect ratio to 16 to 9. I can change the pixel units or inches or millimeters or percent of composition. Most of the times I use pixels. Then you can choose whether you want to use square pixels or a different pixel style, depending on what format you're working with. And then you have the possibility to click here to make it comp size. In my case, it is already comp size, but if I have another value in here, like 500 times 500, for example, this will create a square. Then I could come in here and click comp size, and you see that now it takes over all the settings of my composition. With this option here, I can specify a color for this layer. The standard setting is black, and if you click on this color box here, then you can start creating or changing your color. In my case, I want to create a dark purple color for this for now. I will apply an effect later on, but just for now that we have something to work with, let's create a dark purple background layer, even darker maybe, like so, and then click OK. You could also sample a color by using this eyedrop tool here. Now let's click OK and create our layer. If we come up to our project window and take a look here, you see that After Effects now created a folder that's called Solids. And if we open this up, you see that it added the background solid to our project. So whenever you create a solid, After Effects will add this to your Solids folder and you can take it and reuse it by dragging it into your composition. But right now I only need one background layer. So let's select this and press delete to get rid of it. Now let's add another layer. I can add layers by simply dragging in one of my assets that I've got here. So let's say we want to add my watercolor stain to my composition. So let's drag this in here. Now you can position it above or beneath our background. Of course, it makes no sense to position it beneath because then we will not see it because it's, it's behind our background. I want to apply it above, position it here. You see this black line here appearing and I let it go. And now I positioned my watercolor stain element right above my background. And let's create one more layer. And now I want to create a new shape layer. To create a new shape layer, I come up here again to layer, select new, and then I select new shape layer. By default, After Effects will create an empty shape layer. So there's no content on this shape layer yet, but you see that it already selected my ellipse tool or the rectangle tool, depending on which one you had active the last time. Let's make sure that we select the ellipse tool because we want to draw a circle in the middle here now. And let's come in here to the middle of our composition. Let's drag and click. Let's hold down shift and hold down control to constrain the proportion to a circle and to scale this circle from the point where we clicked initially. So let's create a circle, something like this. If your circle now is not perfectly in the middle of the composition, it's no problem. We will correct this in the next step. Now let's take a look at the basic properties that are available for layers. Therefore, we switch back to our selection tool by pressing V on our keyboard. And now let's take a look here at our timeline panel. So first of all, let's take a look how we can rename layers. Select our shape layer and you can rename it by pressing enter on your keyboard. And now let's say this is our circle you can type in a name and just click away to take over the changes. If you want to enter properties of layers, you can always click this little arrow here. So whenever you see this little arrow pointing to the right, you can click, come in here and can open up more properties. The standard properties of each layer are the transform properties. And if I open all these layers up now and take a look here, I will make this a little bit bigger that we can see all the properties here this a bit bigger and now reposition my 
keyboard display here, you see that all these properties are exactly the same. So for each layer we have the anchor point, property, position, scale, rotation and opacity. So these are the standard properties for all layers in After Effects. You see that our shape layer is a little bit specific because it also has this contents tab here where all the shapes are added that we create. So we can close this for now because we do not deal with this for now. Let's take a look at the transform properties. To show you the transform properties, I want to use this layer because it's a little bit more obvious than working with a shape than working with a circle. So let's hide this circle for now and to make a layer invisible, you can click this little button here that looks like an eye and this is called the hide video from composition button. So let's click this and now you see our circle is invisible. The layer is still available, it just will not be displayed now. To take a look at our properties, let's select our watercolor stain layer. So the first property that we have is the anchor point property. The anchor point is this point here in the middle that looks like a little crosshair. I already showed you this in the tools video. So the anchor point determines where this layer is rotating and where this layer is scaled. And you see that we have a coordinates here for this anchor point and the anchor point coordinates are always in relation to the layer size. The position coordinates always display at what point in our composition the anchor point of a layer is. So if we take a look here, our composition has 1920 pixels in the width and 1080 in the height. So our coordinates are exactly half of it. So this sits exactly in the middle of our composition. By the way, if you want to check out coordinates well, in your composition, you can always take a look here at this info panel. And if I move my cursor now, you can see where my cursor is sitting right here in the left top corner is the zero zero point and down here we have the coordinates of 1920 times 1080. If you want to change properties you can come here to these numbers and then you see that the cursor will change and I can now drag left and right to decrease or increase these values. Let's undo this by pressing Ctrl and C. Okay and you can also click in here and type in a number and press enter either on your numpad or the normal enter button on your keyboard. Undo this again, control C. The same applies of course for the position, so I can change the position right here. Undo this two times to get it back to the middle. Then we have the scale option. You can also come in here and scale it down, scale it up. And do this. I showed you before that this also works by simply clicking on these handles here, hold down shift to constrain the proportions and now you can scale it down and scale it up. Control C to undo this. If you want to scale it only on one axis you can come in here and uncheck this constrain proportions tab and then you can scale the X or you can scale the Y value independently. Let's undo this two times. You can do the same even with the constraint proportions checked when coming in here and clicking on this little boxes here and clicking and dragging. Then you can also scale this layer individually on each axis. So let's undo this. Okay. The next property is the rotation property. You see that we can rotate this here. And if we exceed the 360 degrees, then you see that After Effects will count. Okay, we have now one rotation and keep rotating, keep rotating. So it will add up these rotations with this number here, four full rotations plus 110 degrees. Let's undo this. If I click and drag and hold down shift, then this will be way faster because it now will change the values in steps of 10 instead of one degree. So you see that now if I click and drag it really will rotate very fast and this works for all the properties. So if I change the position here you see I click and drag and it's, I can move it quite slowly and quite accurately. But if I hold down shift then it will move way faster. Let's undo this again. Control C. The last standard property for each layer is the opacity property and I can change this by clicking and dragging from 0 to 100, so 0 is not visible at all and 100 is fully opaque. 
By the way, if you want to check transparencies in your composition, you can always come here and activate the transparency grid. So let's toggle this and you see now we have no transparency in our composition because our background is fully opaque. But if I decrease the opacity now of my background, you see here that this transparency grid is visible and now you see that there is some transparency in our composition and this is very important if you are working for example with alpha channels. So let's set this back to 100, let's deactivate the opacity transparency grid here because we do not need it right now. One more option I want to show you, for example, if you messed up all your settings here, so let's change a few settings here, position and scale and rotation and opacity and you just want to reset the layer to its standard properties then you can come in here to the transform and click reset and all the properties will be reset to standard values so this is also quite handy sometimes okay now let's close up our properties here so you could either come in here and close each tab individually but you can also if all of these are expanded just select all the layers by holding by selecting one holding down shift select the other one and then simply click here and everything will be closed now i want to show you a few more options how you can access the standard properties of layers so you see that up here we have this search bar and if i type in position for example then After Effects will display all the position properties that are available in our timeline panel. I can delete this now again, then it will close up everything. If I only want to search a certain layer or some layers, so let's say I want to only search properties on my watercolor stain, then I can select the layer and then I can type in here position and After Effects will display the position property on this layer. So this can be quite handy if you have really complex projects with a lot of layers and you want to access some properties here fast. Let's delete this. Another option to access the standard properties are keyboard shortcuts. And you know, I'm really a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts and would really recommend that you try to memorize these keyboard shortcuts that I tell you now because they are very important and we will use them a lot during this course. So let's select our watercolor and stain layer. If I now press P on my keyboard, you see that After Effects will show the position values. So P is for position. That's quite easy to memorize. So if we press R on our keyboard, After Effects will show me the rotation value. If I press T on my keyboard, After Effects will show the opacity value. So I think that we can memorize this T is transparency and it's a little bit more logic than T for opacity. So let's say T is for transparency. If we press S on our keyboard with the layer selected, of course, then we enter the scale value. And if we press A with the layer selected, then we enter the anchor point properties. So let's go through this again. Let's close this up and let's start adding our properties. Let's press A to open up the anchor point settings. Now, if you hold down shift and you press P, then After Effects will add this property here. You see, now we added the position property. Now let's continue and let's press Shift and let's press R to add the rotation property. Now let's press Shift and let's press T to add the opacity property. And now let's press Shift and S to add the scale property. And now I think that we got all the properties right so let's take a quick look here again where i forgot something anchor point position scale rotation opacity no good now you know how to access the most important properties of layers and how to change them and you also know the most important keyboard shortcuts when working with layers and properties so as a last step in this lesson let's close down all our properties let's make our circle visible again and let's save our file i go to file save as you could also just use the increment and save options but in my case i now want to save this as project one underscore three save it on your disk in my case i need to overwrite it okay now my project is saved in the next video, we will start creating our layout. So we'll add some more assets to this. We will change the layer properties to create a nice look. And so we will start building our intro animation.